Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. We're going to tell you about the Frog King, or Iron Henrik, or Henry. Starts out in 1823. It was the old times. This was the times of when wishing did any good. And uh, there was a king, and he had some daughters. Some beautiful daughters. They were beautiful daughters. And the youngest one was the most beautiful. And he loved her the most, obviously. (laughs) And she was so beautiful that even the sun was happy to shine down on her face or something. Something like that. He marveled every time he shone his face because the the sun in this story has a persona. She's the one that brings around summer. So we're going to call her summer. Uh, Hmm. It's summer. And the castle, the king's castle, is nearby a forest. And uh, in the forest, it's a dark forest, there is a linden tree, and by the linden tree, there's a well. Um, and the youngest daughter... So you know where the well is. It's by the linden tree. Yeah. It's I, not by the Douglas fir <laughs> or by the evergreen tree. So there's a well in this forest, and on the hot days, I guess, she goes to the forest on these hot days to cool down next to the well and play with the this ball. This golden ball. It's a golden ball. It was her favorite thing. Her favorite play thing. Her favorite play thing. She would toss it to herself up in the air. And she'd then play she'd catch, catch it with herself. Because she didn't have any friends because she was too beautiful for yep. to have friends. Loses the golden ball. Yep. Fall, she, it, she, she watches as it falls into the water and it rolls in and it... It's in the well, so the well is very deep and it keeps going deeper, and so she's really upset and starts crying. She cries really loud and loud. She's, she's louder wailing. And, louder. and then she hears this voice, and it's like, hey, why are you crying? You shouldn't be crying. Can you make stones pity? And she told him. The story. So I lost my ball. So yeah. I lost that ball, and that was like my thing. And then so he said, okay, well, stop crying. I can go get your ball. But what will you do for me? You know what you want. <laughs> and she's like, I'll give you everything, like anything you want. I, I've got like all these things. I've got this dress and this. It could have my clothes. You could have like my pearls, and like my jewels. jewelry. And like you, I have a crown on my head. You can have that. And uh, yeah, whatever you want. And then he's like. Okay, but I don't want all that. What I want is companionship. He's like, I want, I want love. The first thing I said was love. Mm-hmm. But he also wanted to eat from her golden plate and drink from her golden chalice or whatever. I want to sleep in the same bed with you. I want to, I want to, I want to be your. I want to be. I want to be your playmate. Uh, and she's like, yeah, of course, sure thing, sure thing. And so then he dove in the water, and then she's like, this frog is stupid. What can it do? All it can do is sit on this ledge all day and play in the water. It can't be my companion. It can't be a human's companion, a companion <laughs> to a human. It's a stupid frog. <laughs> and the frog comes back up because he couldn't hear her say that because he was in the water. He grabbed the the uh, ball brought it up and tossed it up over on like a little patch of lawn or whatever and she was she was super excited snatched it up and ran and the frog's like wait wait you got real long legs and are moving like way faster than I can move because I'm just a little frog and you've got you're a human so he goes back to the well and she ignores him and runs home and uh, next morning, Princess already forgot about that frog. And Just she's sitting there and she's eating her food with her dad, with her dad the king. The king. And then there's a knock on the door. You hear a you hear a a plip plop. A plip plop. So there was a noise in the distance as she was eating. She heard plip plop, plip plop. 
which obviously is somebody pooping. She goes, here's the knocking on the door somehow. And the, the frog's like, youngest princess, uh, open, the, open the door. And she doesn't know that it's not the frog. Like, yeah. she totally forgot. Literally had amnesia. Anyway, she, she goes to the door, and there's a, a frog there. And he's like, hey, um, let me in, because, you know, we made, a, we made a deal. Slams the door in the frog's yeah. face. And then, and then she gets to the table, and she's freaked out, so her heart's, like, pounding her on. And he sees it. He sees her heart pounding through her chest. And the dad's like, what's up? Did you just see a giant, and he's out to get you? She's like, no, it was a frog. Uh, she tells him the whole story. That she promised that he got her ball, and so she made a deal and promised him companionship and love and sharing her bed and everything. And he was like, you made the promise. You got to keep it. <laughs> She gets the, the spiel, and then the 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 frog. You hear a, sh- a voice. Youngest daughter of the king, open up the door for me. Don't you know what yesterday you said to me down by the well? Youngest daughter of the king, open up the door for me. She goes and she opens the door, and then the frog follows her back to the table, and she sits down, and he's like. Put me on the table. But first thing, when she gets the, when she goes to get him, he's like, "Pick me up and put me on your shoulder." And like, he's kind of pushy. He's like, uh, "Bring the, bring the, your golden plate closer to us, so that I can eat what you're eating, so we can eat together." And uh, and she does. And but you can like you can sense her. Her resistance, like she's her disgust. Yeah, and he's he's like you. The king's like you. He's mad. He's like you shouldn't despise the things that you've made promises to, like the things that are out to help you, the things that have helped you. You should not, in in times of need, as it were. Um, and he's mad. He said, "Do do as you're told." And the, but again, the frog is being pushy. But she does, she she picks him up with two fingers and takes her, him to the bedroom. Puts him in a corner. And then and then she's uh, he's like, put me in the bed with you. I'm I want, so I want to sleep with you. Yeah, if like, you don't, I'm gonna tell your dad. <laughs> he said, I want to sleep in your bed. And so she gets to her bedroom and puts him in a corner and then goes to her bed and he's like, no. I'm in your bed. This, is, this was the deal. She gets pissed because he keeps being pushy. And <laughs> she she takes it and she chucks him at the wall uh, and says, now you can rest in peace. <laughs> she hopes that she killed the frog. But once the frog fell to the floor, it wasn't a frog anymore. It was a dude. And he had kind, beautiful eyes. So he turns into a prince, right? And he gets up off the ground, and he's like, so, yeah, I was a prince. And there was this wicked witch that turned me into a frog. Um, and, it, and then, like, you... And you're the only one that could save me. He didn't even care that she threw him against the wall. Yeah. He wanted her to. So then they, then after, the, after he explained that whole situation, they went to... Um, he's like, I'm going to take you to my kingdom tomorrow. And then she's like, she's like, <laughs> kingdom... <laughs> Uh, Better. And uh, next morning, a carriage comes by to pick him up. And it's pulled by eight horses that have ostrich feathers on their heads and they have gold chains on. <laughs> There's a servant on this carriage that came to pick up the a very loyal the servant. His name was Faithful Henrik. Or Heinrich is a uh, faithful servant of this prince this uh king because henry's really sad about him in being in that predicament so he had um some iron uh bands uh, three of them three of them strapped to his heart uh, to keep it from bursting because he was so sad however after a while of traveling to the kingdom the king hears a like a snapping noise or- Crack or, or a crack. I want to say it was and a crack. he was like, Heinrich, what's wrong with the coach? Did you are you, did you is this coach broke, Heinrich? And he's like, 
uh, I, I put bands around my heart, and that was one of them busting loose. Uh, and they're driving more, and then heard another snap. Two more times. Yep. And mm-hmm. uh, and he's like, my heart is now free from the iron bands. Uh, because we are, because you are happy. Because you're, because <laughs> it's it's a happy ending. And my heart is so overjoyed with love and happiness that it is still expanding, but in a good way. <laughs> Though now everybody was all happy and uh, they, and... you know, they uh, and ever after. To close the chapter on this episode until we meet again, and so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.